Allen, chef and owner of the Perfect Wife Restaurant and Tavern in Manchester here. And we have a great show for you tonight. We're going to do a lot of wine tasting and food pairing with the wine. We're going to learn a lot about old world reds and drink a lot more than normal. So you have something to look forward to. Good food and good wine. I'd like to introduce my guest, Mark Raymond, who's going to take us through all those wines and help us learn about them. Have a seat. All right. And for those of you who haven't seen Clint at my last show, here is Clint Bierman supplying us with some amazing live music. You're in for a real treat. He also just wrote me a new um, intro, and that'll be on air. We're going to put it in there when we edit the show. So listen for the new, sh new song. It's called Spinach, Mom. We love spinach. I've heard it. It's great. It's absolutely awesome. <laughs> it's really funky. So next time we'll dance in. We'll do a dance in, right? We'll have it ready to go. All right. So Mark. Yes. My good friend we've with lots of wine. We've talked about doing this for a long time. I'm very excited. Yeah. We're gonna have fun. Finally made it happen. So you are a. I'm a. I'm, I'm a. A regional manager for an import company so we bring wines in from all over the world South America Europe uh, Australia New Zealand and what I do directly is I go out to um, the states of New England and meet with restaurateurs like yourself um, and retailers and fine wine shops and try to uh, help them understand my wines and find what works for them in their in their world and mm -hmm. hopefully they sell some of my wines well, it works for me. Yeah, that's for sure. yeah, it does. We've had a lot of wine dinners at the restaurant with Mark. We've done a French one. We've done two Italian ones. Right? Yeah, and uh, we've had great success with them. Yeah, they're lots of fun. So keep your ears peeled. We're going to do one soon in a month or two. We haven't really yeah, we think, nailed down a date yet. I think yet. we've got. Uh, I think we're working. Early March, working, maybe. Yeah, yeah, end of February. Something like that. So right around the corner. Um, <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah. So your interest in wine started with owning a restaurant, right? Yeah. I was, I was in the restaurant business for 16 years, yeah. um, and I had um, my own place in Glastonbury, Connecticut for about four, four to five years uh, with a childhood friend of mine. We grew up in the restaurant business together. He went to Johnson & Wales. I went to uh, hotel restaurant management school and um, we kind of got tired of working for other people mm -hmm. and finally said you know let's take a shot and do our own. Uh, it was a great experiment and, and very successful for the four to five years that we were together. Um, we had a brew pub, um, he would change the menu uh, every probably every season and then what was really cool was I create my first wine list which I didn't want to delve into buying a lot of inventory so I created what was called the 2020 wine list. So 20 wines for $20 by the bottle, and every wine was available by the glass by f for $5. And this was in the year? This, oh gosh, this was uh, 1989. Yeah. All right. And wow. uh, it, was, it was a time where you could actually get a lot of selections um, you yes. know, that you could actually sell at $20 yeah. $20 a bottle. $20 is like $40 now, yeah, probably. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's, I was in culinary school in 88 and 89. Okay. And that was a great year for wines, too, because all the 85s coming out of California, and we were tasting some incredible wines, 84s, 85s from I think of the Pinot the Noirs that were coming out of Willamette Valley were really hot at the time, mm -hmm. and you could get them at a reasonable price. And there were a lot of startup wineries that really wanted to get their exactly. wines out there. Exactly. Did you have a Cuvenet? For no, your 20 wines. No, no, we didn't. We did everything um, right out of the bottle. We had we did pretty good volume there. So mm -hmm. uh, the center uh, of the restaurant was uh, sort of a, a raised up bar, sort of like that whole original TGI Fridays concept yeah. where the the middle was up and then the restaurant was around. It was a lot of fun, especially for wine dinners, because what we would do is we'd sell out the place and then I'd stand up on top of the bar and talk to the crowd. Well, you do that at my fun. place too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that's later in the night. Yeah, right. <laughs> so as a chef, I'm interested in what kind of food you did. What did your friend do? It's, what kind of food was it? So we, we tried to have selections for everything. So there was always a couple of staple pastas on the dish. Um, and then we would always have uh, two or three beef dishes. And then we would have a chicken dish. And then, of course, uh, one of his favorite seafood dishes, or I should say signature dish, was a pan-seared sea bass 
with lobster home fried potatoes and a red pepper puree over the top. Lobster home fried potatoes? Yeah. How do you do that? Oh, they were unbelievable. So just so like chunks of lobster chunks in Chunks of lobster fries? in, you know, a classic home fries with peppers and onions. In Glastonbury, did you have a boat coming to you? Like, <laughs> no, you no. Didn't? no, 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 no. Because my friend Ralph was, um, he was from Rowayton and he worked on a lobster boat out of Rowayton. Well, he's from Norwalk and worked on a lobster boat out of Rowayton, which isn't yeah, far, right? No, it's, it's about a 45 minute ride, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're not far from the coast, but you know, again, nowadays we can get seafood. Well, pretty nowadays, much, yeah, pretty, pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Not far from Mystic, right? Right, right. Yeah. About forty-five minutes from Mystic. Okay. So Glastonbury is just south of Hartford, um, maybe ten minutes outside of the capital. You city. still live in the same area, then? I live right across the river in Weathersfield, a little uh, historic old Weathersfield, nice. um, which is right off of ninety-one, which makes it a nice, easy ride to get up to your restaurant. Yeah. Yep, it's Mark's uh, very good about coming and seeing me and Andrea, my manager, and coming to wine shows and. Absolutely. So do you uh, have any besides me? I know I'm your favorite account. You who, are. Who are who are some other? Where are some other restaurants where they could go and try your wines? Not oh, that I want to send them anywhere. My else, goodness. But, you know, gotta share the love. Well, um, I think probably going back that route towards towards Hartford, um, the Wyndham Hill Inn. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, Roland and Chateau, um, and then. Probably have to go up more into uh, the Killington area. I don't think you'll get anything towards Brattleboro much. Okay. But yeah. All right. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. So um, tonight, yeah. um, Mark's going to test me, and because uh, I want to be tested actually, and, and Clint's going to come up with us too. And um, we've brown bagged our wines here. <laughs> and uh, Mark said they range in price from 12 to $60. So we're going to taste the wines, and I've made five dishes. We're not going to cook tonight, which is kind of fun for me, <laughs> since I cooked all day. <laughs> um, and we're going to pair the wine with the food, what we think, and then we're going to do the big reveal and see, see if we did what the experts would have said. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that you're pretty up on um, what they say should go with this and that. And, yeah. And, uh, my, I always say, if you like the wine and you like the food, then drink the wine you like with the food you like. <laughs> Which, Agreed. you know, that makes sense to me. Agreed. But, of course, Haas had a good point when we were talking earlier. He says, I, I sometimes I feel, and sorry to throw you under the bus, Haas, sometimes I feel a little bit unsure of what I should order and I don't want to look stupid. And so maybe we'll help everybody with a little education tonight, too, so they can look at a wine list and go, oh, Tempranillo, I had that. That's good stuff. I'm going to order that. I know how to say it. Mm -hmm. I know where it comes from. Right. So we're all yeah. going to leave here a little bit we, smarter. We love questions, right? Yeah. That's oh, yeah. And we'll have questions at the end. And I know you all love to ask them. So. But the key to really finding out what you like is you got to drink more. Yeah. And, you know, my wife has a little joke at home. She says, you know, people always say when you walk into these events, oh, you're the wine professional, so on and so forth. She's like, you're really just a professional drinker. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's some truth to that. Yeah, because you were telling me, you, have, you go to your accounts and you drink wine with them, and then you get back to your office and you have wine tastings with what just came in. You have to learn about what you're going to sell, and then you have to drink it with the people you're selling it to. Exactly. There's a lot of spitting, though, right? Yes, yeah. sure, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> but you're familiar with the inns along the way. Yes, so, yeah. yes. You know, sometimes, you know, it just doesn't make it back out. Yeah. You just have to swallow. It's, it's just yeah. the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> it tastes better that way, yeah. too. <laughs> Absolutely. How do I know if I like it if I don't feel good when I'm done? Right, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> well, I'm really excited to get going and um, yeah. do some tasting and try this food. All the meat that we're eating tonight is from the Northeast region. I can't say necessarily Vermont, but it's all from Black River Meats, which we know I have a connection to and a love for. So um, we're going to drink wines from across the ocean and we're going to None eat. of which are from Vermont. None of these wines. <laughs> They're not across the Vermont Ocean? No. <laughs> <laughs> the Champlain Ocean? <laughs> and um, so we're going to have fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. And um, I think we should get going. And Clint, send us out to the kitchen. We'll be back. All right. That's some good eating and drinking music right there. Oh, yeah. So now the fun part begins. Um, 
why don't you tell me a little bit about these five wines. I'm not going to know which one is which. Correct. So don't point. All right. Okay, no pointing. I'm not going to no tell you either. what's in the bags yet. But okay. I will tell you I chose six wines from around the world. Five. Five wines. Obviously, I've been drinking too much already. <laughs> Five, five wines from around the world, um, going from lighter, lightest to darkest. And uh, what we're trying to do here is um, show, I think, a, a selection of reds that go with, with, with hearty dishes. And that's what we had kind of talked about. And then in addition to that, there's a really broad scale of price points. There's one in here that's $12, and there's one in here that's $60. So it'll be interesting to see if, once we start tasting through, what... Uh, what you find and, and what you like. Yeah. So. Well, I kind of hope I like the $12 one. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to feel like I know this, love the $60 one. So I've, I've made five dishes. Um, I made a cavatappi pasta with um, mushrooms, black truffle, cream, Parmesan cheese, and spinach, mm. which is, I think, going to be my favorite. Uh, I made an elk burger. This elk is from Fairfax, Vermont. A ground elk little slider with Hildeen Farm Havarti on top on a puree of sweet potatoes that's been seasoned with some southwestern seasoning. So we have that to deal with when we're pairing the peppery yeah. spiciness of that. I'm very interested in that. Mm. Oh, yes, Elk's a good. first for me. All right. I think it's going to be my, well, no, I had elk when I worked in Aspen, but it's my first Vermont elk. Then we have some um, shoulder tender of beef here, grilled and sliced with a red wine sauce and an eggplant, caper, and olive relish, which will be fun to pair as yeah, well. Yeah, with that acidity, absolutely. I've got some Vermont pork tenderloin with an apple cider sauce and um, apple fan garnish. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sounds kind of boring, pork, but it's delicious. Pork tenderloin, yeah. Um, and then some Vermont lamb ribs. And those I braised in red wine, rosemary, and finished that sauce with a little mint jelly, and that's on a bed of braised kale and roasted garlic. So we have a lot of flavors to deal with here, and some great wines. And yeah. I'd like to invite Clint to come up and help us eat and drink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can't get here fast Greatest enough. Greatest day ever. <laughs> All right, buddy. Yeah. All right, so um, I think I'll just... Give us all, we'll start with the pasta, you think? Yeah, let's start with the pasta. Because that's what I mostly want to eat myself. <laughs> so I don't want to be full when I get to the pasta. And we'll try to run through this quickly so you guys don't get bored. I know probably the worst thing in the world is watching other people eat and drink, so. I'll hand out the forks. Okay, thank you. There you go. Here you are, sir. Thank you, sir. So we'll have a little bite of our food and then a little sip of each wine and yeah. And do we have to go like in order or we can each grab well, a glass and... So the way I've set it up, I think it okay. goes uh, A to E. So yeah, that's uh, lightest to boldest. Okay. All right. Just go for it. Yeah. yeah. All right. I hope it's good. Oh, I'm sure. It's not all going to be super hot because mm. it's been sitting here, but... Oh my God. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> I was chef of the year like in 2010. Yeah, you were. <laughs> Clearly, I can see why. Mm. Oh, I don't want to stop so eating and start drinking. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to reach for glass A. All right, I'm going to get glass E. All right, and then, oh, all right, now we have to be careful to put them back in okay. the right places. B. All right. E. Cheers. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. That's my favorite so far. I may be the winner. <laughs> <laughs> and then a quarter term. Don't commit so quick. Come on. A quarter term. Oh, that's it's early yet. Okay. All right, I'm going to grab that one. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. I'm going to dip that truffle. Mm. Now, what's this little thing you're doing? Well, you got to get a little air in there. So you put a little on your palate and you sort of breathe in a little bit of air and it kind of oxidizes on your tongue and livens up the palate. It's the best way to taste wine. <laughs> All right. Is this your first elk? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Mm. That is incredible. Mm. 
my number. My and number, I'll discuss why later. My number two is A. Me too. <laughs> D. D for the B. C. Oh, man, that's good. This is the hanging tender, shoulder tender of beef with the eggplant caper and I'll bite. That's an apple cider sauce there. Help yourself. Please. I can, I can cut. Yeah, take yeah, that. Yeah, let's cut. Is that you asked about acidity. Mm -hmm. When when you have acidity in a dish, you almost want to match acidity in a wine. And red wines do have acidity. Mm -hmm. So I look for wines that have not just great fruit to them. And when I say fruit, like brightness in fruit, sort of you know the, the ripe berries or the ripe plums, uh, blueberries that people talk about, but also have sort of a, a, an acidic line to it, a crispness to the wine. Um, which means that it can't have too much oak. Okay. So because if you if you start adding in too much oak, it sort of softens the wine and makes it elegant, and it will it might fall flat with with the acidity in the dish. Okay. For me, a for the pork, please. Yes. Until that moment. <laughs> Isn't this so enlightening? It's really so much fun. That's a lot of wine we just. As soon as they get to taste, they'll see how yeah. enlightening. Mm -hmm. Do you cook with wine at home a lot? I do. Sometimes I use some in the food too. <laughs> They've never heard that joke before. <laughs> mm. What's in the sauce again? Shallots, white wine, apple cider, and um, some demi gloss. Oh, that's, I gotta replicate that. Oh. That's and amazing. fresh thyme. Two Wait, bottles. Why wouldn't you have two bottles of wine at the table? We got five. <laughs> How could you be the life of the party and not have two bottles? It's what this show is all about. Exactly. We've had dinner with an astronaut. We've made little bunny rolls for Easter. We've made death by chocolate. We learned about whistle pig. We've made incredible barbecue. And it hasn't been until this very moment that we've had this much fun and drank this much wine. <laughs> all right. So from Rioja, Spain, Number one is El Coto Criantha. That is 100% Tempranillo. It's um, 12 months in oak, uh, 12 months in the barrel, in the bottle, I'm sorry. And then um, it's just uh, a really wonderful, easy drinking, which I, I, I'm excited to share with you very shortly. And then um, wine number two is Don David Malbec. This is from Argentina. But it's from Argentina, about three hours north of Mendoza, um, in what would be sort of the Napa Valley of Argentina. Um, really high elevation, which makes it really lean and clean, and a wonderful, different, interesting Malbec. And then we come with a second Malbec, which is Luigi Bosca. This is a DOC, which means that it's actually an area in Argentina that is known for growing Malbec and really the first one that was imported into the United States. And it's, it's really uh, put Malbec, it, it recognizes Malbec as a, as a growing region now um, from a little area called Lujan de Cuyo in, um, in Mendoza. And then we go to southern Italy and we have what's called the Primitivo. And this is um, Castellomonici Castello uh, Primitivo. This is a rich, intense ripe fruit um, sort of uh, the kin to uh, American Red Zinfandel um, really bold and spicy and, and a great wine with some of the things we've had here mm -hmm. and then last but not least is Leragoze Amarone a family-owned winery mm. from Valpolicella I knew it. done in the Amarone style where they dry the grapes and press those raisins and make a really intense red wine and then if we're putting price tags on them, which I guess we should, yeah. we'll go from $12 yes. to $19 to $24, back to uh, $15, $60. Yes! You're even better than before. before hit. It was great. Oh, yeah, it was only sort of good. <laughs> now it's awesome. <laughs> Tonight's too show funny. was awesome, too. Thank you so much. Thank so you. Much fun. This is a lot of fun.
Um, a few questions come up about wine and food. Um, we had a lot of fun pairing things today. Um, one of the dishes is on my menu, the steak with the eggplant relish. But it seems like any time I put eggplant on something, it doesn't sell very well, so I think I'm going to take it off. So eat it all tonight and uh, request it as a special if you love it. Um, the other things are we have an elk, we do an elk burger as a special a lot of times. Um, it's been very popular and we do it differently all the time, so it's a lot of fun to have fun with a burger that's not just a burger. Um, and I think I'm going to make that pasta dish again. Oh my God, I it's hope really, so. really good, and I have a lot of it, so you'll love it. And the lamb ribs were an appetizer this weekend. I'm not sure how Tim did the sauce, but probably quite similar. We have the same style of cooking. Um, so come to dinner. That's yeah. why I'm doing this. <laughs> come to dinner. <laughs> so um, the wine, yeah. um, you know, there's a lot of screw top wines out there, a lot of plastic corks or fake corks, I guess. What do you yes. call them? Artificial. Artificial, mm. yeah. Um, so what, is there, does one thing mean the wine's better or worse? Not really anymore. Um, you're seeing now not only stealth enclosure, which is the screw cap, but you're seeing glass capsules, especially with um, wines coming out of uh, southern France. Provence, rosés are in now yes. glass closures, which is r really kind of cool. Um, and really effective when you're out on the road having a picnic and you don't have a corkscrew. So it's just pop it right off and you're done. Um, but I think what we're seeing in the wine world is Stelv Enclosure is really good for wines that are meant to be drunk, drank at a, a young age and fresh. Um, there, we're not seeing them in the worlds of uh, great uh, Bordeaux's or Burgundies or even great California cabs. You know, you won't see the cult wines like Screaming Eagle uh, go to Stelv Enclosure. Uh, it, there's just not the belief system um, that the wine ages well enough with that right now. Uh, it's, it's a complete seal and it, uh, it doesn't let any exposure of air and that really is important to the ageability of wines. There has to be sort of a little give and take with oxygen. Does anyone think that the actual cork adds a different flavor? Does it sit on the cork and I, change I, the wine at yeah, all? Yeah, I think cork, for the most part, is neutral. The only time we have problems or, or flavor with cork is when, when it gets a little oxidized or uh, it gets what's called TCA, uh, a sort of a fungus, and then oh. you get that sort of uh, stinky socks sort of smell mm. to the wine, which, yeah. or, or, or just, you know, it's it's a distinctive flavor, uh, a note or a scent, and it's it's really not. That's appealing. when people send it back. Right? That's when they should send yeah. it back for yeah. sure, for sure. Unless you you know you don't want to look silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this must be what good wine tastes like. Yeah, yeah. Don't it's, do that. It's funny. Some people you see that uh, you know. I was talking with uh, someone earlier today from the show, and they were expressing how you know you get into a restaurant and it gets kind of. Uh, intimidating because you you know you order this big expensive bottle of wine and you're like well this isn't really what I like you should never be intimidated by that mm -hmm. it's you've paid the money for that wine if you don't like it send it back and believe me if the restaurant needs to do something with it either the chef or owner or yeah. staff members if you don't will like drink it, it I'll take it they'll definitely <laughs> drink it or they'll but get also, their money back right the yeah. distributors are also always willing to take the bottle back and give us our money back so don't worry about us yeah for sure yeah um, other question something about acidity versus tannin okay. and how it affects what you're eating so tannin um, when I talk to people about tannin I always uh, try to make uh, put sort of a, a relative experience. So most people in the world have had uh, uh, black tea. And if you drink just straight black tea, it has a way of sort of drying out your mm -hmm. tongue. Um, that's really what tannin is. It's, it's, it's along those lines. And it comes from the extractions of wood, as well as uh, a little bit from the grape skins. And then sometimes when they do whole cluster pressing, there could be some, some tannin that comes from the seeds or the, the stems of the grapes. Mm -hmm. Um, that is something that really is tried to um, be used in a, in, a, in a very controlled manner, but you do get some of these big red wines that will have uh, excessive oak to them because the winemaker feels that that's what the wine needs to give it its longevity, sort of as a preservative. Um, 
it, uh, it's, it's very different from acidity. Acidity comes from uh, the brightness of the grapes, and um, it's, it's something completely different. So acidity affects the palate as far as flavor goes, and the tannin kind of just makes your mouth feel different? Different. It, it start, well, tannin makes it feel different at, at, a, at a very young age in the wine, but as, as the bottle ages, like those big red wines, you, you find 10, 20 years down the road, those tannins start to sort of settle in and really soften up. And then people start talking about how this wine is so velvety and lengthy on the palate, and everything's just sort of blending together at that point. So it's worth it to buy wine and store it. That, yeah. you know, it's hard to spend money on something and then put it in your closet for 20 years, but give it a shot with one or two. Put your birthday on it 20 years from now, right? Always buy it in 12 packs. That way you can drink a little bit now, a little bit later, and a little bit later than that. There you go. Don't not drink wine. That's right. Thank you so much. Thank this you. Was so this much was so fun. much fun. We, we learned a lot, I think. Did we learn a lot? All right, good, all right. Thank you, Clint, you're awesome. So thank you everyone in the studio audience. Thank you out there in TV land, and we'll see you all next time on Life of the Party!